Hello, this is a vintage Seiko chronograph automatic watch. I know it's a Seiko chronograph automatic because it says Seiko chronograph automatic. And it's vintage because it's from the 1970s. This is uh, the nickname of this watch is the Seiko Pogue. So why is it called the Pogue? Well, Seiko sponsored the group, the Pogues. And every time the Pogues would go on stage, they would give them one of these watches. So they became known as the Seiko... No, I'm kidding. It was because in the 70s, Colonel William Pogue wore one of these during a NASA mission. And it was the first automatic chronograph watch worn in space. That's cool, isn't it? Right, I'm going to show you around this watch. This isn't my watch. I've been lent it. I don't know... I'm not an expert, I don't know all the specific details. Uh, regular viewers will know that the point of these videos is just to show you around. It's like a little guided tour. That's why it's called a hands-on review. I'll just show you it. We'll talk about the bits and bobs, the various features, the things that I notice. Inside is an automatic 6139 movement, Seiko. Uh, fantastic movement. We'll have a look at it in a minute. Um, I've, I've got the case back loose so we can, I can show you it. Before we do that, uh, let's just have a look at the dial. So let's get it focused. So uh, there are a few scuffs and scratches on the watch. It's a vintage piece. It hasn't been serviced. It's just arrived. Uh, we might get it all tidied up. We might not. We'll see how we get on. But for now, let's just see what we've got. So let's start with the outer bezel. The outer bezel is fixed. It's uh, it doesn't rotate. There's no there's nothing to grab or turn. It's a fixed bezel, and it's a tachymeter. So let's just zoom in a bit. There. So tachymeter around the outside, 60, 59, 58. Lovely red and blue Pepsi bezel are all around the outside, and that bezel is if I can get the angle. Can you see? on the inside edge of that bezel, it's beveled. So beveled bezel. Uh, it's difficult to make out uh, on the video. Yeah, you, you can't quite see. It's, it's slightly beveled on the inside. Um, another interesting quirk of this watch is the crystal. So the crystal is um, mineral glass. Uh, it's got that this scratch, this scuff on it that I can't polish out. Um, with my normal um, plexiglass polish stuff. But let's just have a look at the crystal because it's really lovely. Right, watch the shadow, the, the, the light as it tilts through there. So you, can you see the edge of the crystal is shaped a, sort of like a volcano edge. The, the surface is flat and the edges come, come up like that. It's a, it's a really lovely thing. The way that that slopes into the beveled edge of the bezel, it's a remarkable combination of design touches. That's just the bezel and the crystal. We haven't gone into the rest of it yet. So the dial. Now the dial is just something else. That yellow, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, you obviously you can see it, but in real life, uh, the way it glimmers in the sunshine. I'm trying to make it just play with the light that I've got in my studio here. But in real life, in the sunshine, the way it catches the light. Ah, oh, it's really, it's really, really lovely. Golden yellow. It's like a, oh, what are those? Like a golden oriole. Have you ever seen one of those birds, the golden oriole? Uh, you see it in pictures. Have a look on the internet. It's a beautiful bird. It looks amazing. When you see it in real life, holy moly. The yellow is something else. That's this. That yellow is just something else. Around the dial of the the face of the of the main dial are these applied indices. I'm going to zoom in again. The, the the focus might be a bit on the tricky side. So you've got these massive. I don't know what you'd call those really. The silver um, indices across the top, and then big chunks of rectangular loom off the bottom of it. I'm not describing it very well. You can see what I'm talking about anyway. That loom glows. That still glows a little bit. And um, the hands are similar sort of design, really. These sort of... Um, 
oh, what I want to say sort of three dimensional hands that you can see they've they've got edges to them um with a with a spine running down the center of both the hour and the minute hand with the big chunk of loom uh, in the in the center of them uh this now these that sword hand there that that there isn't a second hand it's the chronograph second hand and it's a beautiful red uh, matches the the bezel and then at six o'clock there's a little sub dial little um let me just get the focus for you just recessed sub dial simple 10 20 30 markings on it and that's the um the minute uh, counter for the chronograph and when I talk about the chronograph, let's just see if we can get it going. Now, I've just ha uh, I've just picked this up after it's been inactive for several weeks. So um, let's just see if there's any, any charge in it. No, I haven't got it. There's no charge in it. It needs a service. It's uh, It needs a little bit of a, of a helping hand. I'll give it a little shake and see if I can get a bit of life out of it. Um, whilst I do so, um, I'd just like to say if you wanted to like this video you'd be very welcome to it's a bit strange asking you to like whilst I'm shaking a watch in front of your eyes but uh, it's just an opportunity to say like the video comment tell me about this watch I don't know a huge amount about it um, other than what I'm sort of waffling on about um, and subscribe subscribe so I do watches I do also knives and EDC gadgets and bits and bobs. Have a look around my channel. There'll be stuff there, that you, other stuff that you might like. There's loads of other Seikos. Let's see if that's given it any life. Just a little bit, just to watch the second hand tick. No. Okay, not to worry. Now, this, uh, so we've done the dial, we've done the hand, etc., etc. We've done the, 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 um, the bezel. Now the inner bezel does rotate. Now, how does it rotate? This little crown that's flush with the, the case uh, just spins the bezel. Now, let's, let's just get this lined up and focus so you can see it happening. There you go. So the inner bezel rotates a bit like a super compressor might with its uh, two chunky crowns. This Seiko have done it with a very, very discreet little crown flush with the, the body of the watch. And it's really nice and smooth. So you know, use that like like you would a normal bezel. A um, bit of loom there, nice chunky sort of, not quite a triangle. Uh, it's the only bit of loom. I suppose you'd call it a pip, uh, traditionally, and if it were an out outer bezel. And that's uh, you can see that's at an angle that uh, that inner bezel. Lovely thing that, isn't it? The next thing to talk about is the day and date window. So I'm just going to pull the crown out and set the date, the time well out of the way of the date and day so we can see what's going on. Right, now let's get this this uh, focus because this is really weird and amazing. So we're talking about 50 years ago. Now, it's a quick set day and date. Okay, and it's all done via this little crown. I push the crown very gently. Hang on, let me just grip, grip, grip the watch. Good, good grip. Here we go. Oh, the focus, bloody hell! Right, I push the crown very gently, and the date changes. I'll do that again. Push the crown very gently. Can you hear it? Date changes. If I push it harder, the day changes. Right, here we go. Are you ready? There we go. The date changes as well. So you'd have to sort of figure out how on earth you're going to change the day and the date to be right. Take a little bit of planning. But there we go. Pretty cool. So all I'm doing is pushing this hard, very hard, and just less hard. Amazing quick set. I've never seen that before. It's, it's good, I think. It's good. I haven't quite got the hang of it, and I probably never will because I'm I'm sending this off to my friend tomorrow, so um, this won't be in my uh, in my presence for much longer. Cool, that isn't it? So this tiny little flush crown here does the inner bezel, does the quick set date and day and the time. Amazing, amazing. Well done, Seiko. Flipping heck. Right. 
Uh, now, uh, there's, there's, there's no there's no charge in the mainspring, so I can't get the, the, the chronograph to, to go. But you... you oh, that's really annoying. You can imagine it. It's it's smooth. It ticks smoothly. Um, the top one, it's lovely and firm when, when it does actually work. You click that, that starts ticking. You click that and stop. That's your timer. And if you let it go long enough, the minutes underneath will tick away. So it times 30 minutes. Stop and then you reset with the bottom pusher and that will reset to zero perfectly. Okay, so that's that. Let's have a look at the case. We've got these three buttons. Sorry, these two buttons, pushers, either side of the slightly flush crown. Uh, the case itself is uh, brushed, lovely sort of spiral, uh, round uh, spiral brush at the top, sharp edges, and then polished along this edge with another angle, polished, swooping down to the underside of the watch. The underside of the watch has this. I should I should say actually this this bracelet is not uh, not Seiko. It's an aftermarket thing that the the previous owner put on. It's quite cool, uh, but it, we, we can disregard that. Sorry, back to the case. So we're sweeping down to the back of the case. Let's. Oh, oh man, clumsy today. Let's focus on the case back. There we go. You can see some markings. I don't need to read that out to you, do I? 6139 water resistant, Japan, serial number, stainless steel, Seiko, and the little Seiko logo down there in the, in the center. Little, oops. Right, whilst we're here, I'm going to zoom back out and we'll um, have a look at the movement. It's not massively exciting. Uh, it's uh, Seiko standard Seiko Fair, but for complete lists, let's have a look at it. Let's get that case out of the way, the case back out of the way. Um, this is a clumsy video, I do apologise. Nothing in there, nothing really. You can see it's interesting little bumps uh, in the inside of the case back and the gasket there. Oh, shite, I hate when I lift the gaskets out. That's fine. Right, sorry, back to the movement. Let's have a look. There we go. Not massively exciting, but 50 year old chronograph that went into space. Pretty cool. Let's turn it over. We'll have a look at the, the other bit to it. There's a bit of colour on that side. Now, that I'm not sure what's going on with the watch. It, I think it does need a service. The um, That, that fellow should be ticking away, but it's not. It's just. Zoom in a little bit and you can see some of the detail if you if you fancy there we go. Okay, so that's that. Um I'm gonna show you the watch on my wrist so you can um see what you think. Now I don't know if you noticed, can you see that case back? It has quite a deep curve to it. There's quite a lot of movement to encase. Let's get the focus. Um, it's you know a chronograph. A chronograph movement is uh, is a detailed thing, and uh, it's not thin. It's not a thin watch. So I'll, I'll show you the dimensions with my trusty ruler. Uh, um, so it's forty. Let's have a look. Forty-one millimeters across. Chunky, pretty chunky, especially for those days. I mean, this is a serious uh, piece of equipment. Um, the lug width is an annoying nineteen millimeters. Um, which is pesky, but you know, uh, these days you can find anything you need uh, in any dimension. Um, the depth, so the depth I was mentioning briefly before, I'm going to just see it, uh, I'm just closing my eye to it, it's 13, yeah, it's 13 millimetres thick, which is chunky. Now, um, I mean, it's not massively chunky, but if I put it on, seven and a half inch wrist, and it looks looks nice. Dimension wise it looks good. Lug to lug, or uh, width etc. However, if I come down this way, it sits quite proud. It's not a, it's not a, a wrist hugging watch. That's okay. I don't mind that. I'm just pointing it out. So you've got the, that case back is really curved, deep, because it's a deep, uh, it's a tall movement. That side profile is 
Well, it's proud, isn't it? Anyway, interesting to see, I think. Another thing that I just noticed as I was mentioning uh, that on my wrist, you see this, this the metal bezel, the underside of the beautiful Pepsi bezel is uh, has this interesting sort of fluted shape to it. It's an interesting shape, isn't it? Very interesting shape. Right, I've shown you around. We've had a good look at it. I'm going to zoom in and just waffle on a little bit whilst you have a look at it close up. Uh, let's get it nice and focused so you can actually appreciate it. It's a... Oh, I'm going to come back out. It's really nice, isn't it? It's a really pretty, vibrant... It's a happy watch. Now I've worn, I did wear this, and it was, uh, and it worked perfectly when I was wearing it. I think it just needs, uh, it needs bringing out of the wardrobe for a bit, um, and, a, and, a, and a bit of a service. When I wore it, the looks, I, I, I've never had a watch looked at so much as this. Um, people I was chatting with would glance at my wrist. Uh, this, this catches the eye, and uh, I can see why. It's an eye catcher. Oh man, I've waffled on, haven't I? Uh, I hope you've uh, you've got something out of this video. At least you got to see the watch. I mean, you could you could have just muted it and uh, ignored all my nonsense, and got got to see the watch, which uh, is ultimately the point of these videos. I appreciate you sticking around. Thanks very much for watching. Have a look around my channel, as I mentioned. Subscribe if you can. That would be great. Thanks again. I'll see you soon.